Hello everyone, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Michael. I've just made these banana rolls. If you've got a couple of ripe bananas, and I'm sure you've got a couple of these other ingredients in your pantry, get those out and get ready. Let's get started making these dinner rolls. First, we're gonna take 90 milliliters or six tablespoons of milk, and we're gonna heat that up to between 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't wanna get that any hotter than that because it could kill the yeast. And then we're gonna take a half a tablespoon of yeast, and we're gonna put it into the milk mixture, mix it together. We wanna to make sure that gets active. And what you don't wanna do is make your bread and find out that the yeast is dead, is not gonna rise. So get that mixed together first. After that gets mixed together, we're going to set that aside and let that sit between 5 to 10 minutes to make sure that that activates. You'll be able to tell it is when it starts bubbling on the top. Now I've got two ripe bananas. We want to make sure those are really ripe. And then we're going to take those and peel those and put those into a bowl. After we get them in our bowl, we're going to take the back of a fork and just give those a good mash up. All right, now that I've got those mashed up with the fork, I'm gonna take the back of the spatula here and just kind of push this down a little bit into the bottom of that bowl just to break up any big pieces. Now I've got two tablespoons of unsalted melted butter, or that is 28 grams, and we're gonna put that in with the bananas. Now we're gonna take our yeast, mine is really activated here, and I'm gonna put that in with my mixture of my bananas and my butter. Now I'm going to take my spatula and give this a good mix through. I want all of those ingredients incorporated together. Now I've got two and a quarter cups of bread flour, or that's 270 grams, and I'm going to add in about a third of it into the mixture. I'm going to take my spatula and start incorporating that into my wet ingredients. Continue adding your flour until you get it all incorporated into the wet ingredients. Now that we've got our mixture mixed together, I'm going to take one of these little bonnets that I've got here and put it over the top of my bowl. You can use cling film if you don't have one of these, and we want to put this someplace warm so it can rise for about an hour. I'm going to put mine in the oven with just the light turned on or until it doubles in size. Now I've got a 8 inch round cake pan that I've got here, and I'm just going to take some butter and I'm going to use my cling hands here, and I'm going to go in and butter the bottom of the pan and the sides of it as well. Now I've got my bread dough out of my warm place, and let's take the bonnet off of it and see what we've got here. You can see that it's doubled in size, and we've got some really pretty dough. I've got a silicone scraper here, and I'm going to ease the dough out of the bowl onto my floured surface. Now I'm going to take my dough here and turn it over and make sure that both sides of that dough gets floured, and I'm just going to kind of flatten it out just a little bit until I get kind of a rectangular shape here, about a uh, five by 10 shape. And then I'm gonna roll it up on one side there and make that into a nice little loaf as you see here. All right, now that I've got mine in this nice little loaf here, I'm gonna turn it over and those ends that are open like that, I'm just gonna give that a pinch together and just make sure that's sealed up and just roll that out into a nice little cylindrical form here, about 12 inches long. Now I'm going to grab this metal bench scraper that I've got and I'm going to take this and cut this dough right into two equal pieces. Now that I'm going to take one half of that section, I'm going to cut that in half and we're going to cut this down until we get eight pieces out of this one half. So for the total for both sides, you'll get 16 little pieces and that'll make 16 rolls. Now that I've got one half of my dough cut into eight little pieces, I'm gonna take just a little bit more flour and put that onto my surface here. And then I'm gonna take each one of those individual dough balls that I've got there, and I'm going to form that into a little round ball. And I'm just gonna take it and pinch it up on the bottom. And then I'm gonna put it in my hand and just kind of pull the outside together until I get that nice round shape that we're looking for in a roll. Now I'm going to take my uh, dough ball that I've got there and roll it around in my hand with both palms until I get a nice round shape there, and then we'll move on to the rest of them. Now that we've got our first roll done there, I'm going to put it into my greased baking pan there that I've got, and I'll continue to work on the rest of these until I get all 16 of them completed. All right, I've got my rolls completed now. I've got all 16 of them in my baking pan here, and I actually greased a second baking pan, and I'm going to put that over the top 
that's going to be what I'm going to use when I rise these again. I'm going to put these back in that warm spot, back in my oven to go with just a light on, and we're going to let those rise again for about an hour or until it doubles in size. You can actually take some cling film if you'd like and put some of that butter on the top of it, but just be careful with that. If you put the cling film on your rolls, that they do not stick and deflate. So that's why I put the second pan over the top of it, just to create a little bit more of an area for those rolls to rise. All right, my rolls have risen for another hour and you can see that they've doubled in size. They actually come up a little bit over the top of the pan that I've got here. So definitely that extra pan on the top helped out for that extra rise on that. So now we're gonna take just a little bit of milk that I've got here and a brush and we're gonna brush that over the top of each one of our rolls. And that's gonna add just a little bit of color to it and add that nice little crust on the top. Now that we've got our milk on top of all of our rolls now, they're ready to go into that preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for between 20 to 25 minutes. Everybody's oven cooks a little bit differently, so keep a watch on them. Mine cooked for about 22 minutes. I've just taken these rolls out of the oven and they popped right out of the pan behind me and they are still really hot. And when you get ready to serve these, you can take some butter and put over the top of them and melt that right into the top of these. That would be really delicious to have it like that. I'm gonna... So I wanted to show you what my roll looks like here. It's got a really nice smell to it, just a faint smell of banana. And let's open it up and see what this looks like. Look at that nice crumb we've got on that. That looks really delicious. Let's give this a try. Mm, mm, mm. That is absolutely delicious. I know you're going to love this recipe with those two ripe bananas I had with a few other ingredients. You can put these dinner rolls together very easily. If you like this content, maybe you might consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And while you're at it, maybe you check out one of these other two videos over here on the side. You might find something else you like. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave me a comment if you've ever had banana rolls before. And if you haven't and you make these, I definitely want to hear from you how yours turned out. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye now.